Now, ever since authorities in northeast Nigeria closed a dozen camps for people displaced by terrorism, banditry, among others, those still open have found themselves overwhelmed, coupled with the scarcity of food aid. But for most, returning homes is not an option, where danger and insecurity remain. Betty Nwili has more in this report. Camps for people fleeing violent attacks in northeast Nigeria have become overwhelmed after the authorities closed a dozen of the sites over the past year to try to prompt families to return home. For Aisha Usman, who is among those displaced by violence, the situation has made it harder to feed her large family. For eight years, Aisha, her husband and their nine children have lived in the informal camp of El Miskin, home to around 7,200 displaced people in the Borno state capital of Meduguri. In 2014, Boko Haram jihadists attacked the family's house and killed her neighbors before her eyes. One of her children was kidnapped and never returned. <laughs> A bloody conflict between the army and terror groups in the region has been raging for 14 years. More than 40,000 people have been killed and 2 million more displaced, creating one of the gravest humanitarian crises of the 21st century. More than 100,000 people in recent years took refuge in Meduguri, which is protected by security trenches and guarded by the army. This food insecurity has worsened with the uh, closing of camps from Meduguri, a lack of land for farming due to insecurity outside the garrison town, and influx of more of these people from the surrounding villages, which is being controlled by the AOGs. The move is a part of a wider bid by the leaders of Borneo State to close all camps by 2026 with an aim to end dependency on humanitarian aid and encourage displaced people to return to their fields. But the result is that informal camps like El Miskin are now overflowing and conditions are deteriorating. According to the United Nations, others driven from the closed sites have spilled out to the remaining official camps further afield, like in the city of Bama, 70 kilometers southeast, and around 4.4 million people face food insecurity in northeast Nigeria. Thank you very much, Bettina Whaley, for that report. It's unfortunate to see the results and the effects of, um, you know, or, or actually what's happening in a lot of these refugee camps. Not yeah. a lot of light is being shown on it. So it's great that we have this story to tell. But beyond shining the light on what's happening there, these people need relief. They need aid. They need to be able to get back to their lives pre the whatever crisis they're running away from, be it kidnapping or banditry. You know, I, I wonder if we prioritize them. Sometimes I think about the fact that even as we are struggling, the average Nigerians struggling to feed, struggling to make ends meet with the increased cost in 
pump price of petrol, and thereby the resultant increase in cost of living. I wonder what happens to those who are living in the IDP camps as well. It would indeed be terrible. Yeah, and the legitimate concerns, you know, but, and in the bigger picture for me also is, you know, have we successfully ended the reasons there in the IDP camps in the nope. first place? You know, so uh, that for me is, you know, where I feel like the biggest failure would be, you know, so you could take care of people in IDP camps for 10 years, 20 years, you know, but it doesn't change the fact that, you know, you failed. Um, and uh, the initial, you know, um, duty that you have is to protect life and property. These people had to flee their homes because you failed to protect lives and property. And so um, after being in IDP camps for two, three, four, five, maybe even 10 years, um, you know, governor, governments come and go, but have we really sorted out and solved the real reason that they are there? We sorted out the insecurity challenges? No, to some extent. So yeah. that for me, you know, is a big picture. But, you know. But whilst we whilst we're, we're trying to sort out the big picture, I'm hoping that we can prioritize these ones now. In the same way they're, yeah, they're all absolutely. talking about palliatives and everything. Absolutely. They need to feed. They need to survive. They need to be able to have a decent quality of life. Pending I agree, I agree when with that. we hopefully are able to deal with the reasons why they're there. Yeah. All right.